Okay, so this is okay. This is going to be part three here of the summer analysis. Now let's look at the cost analysis and go on from the finances and so forth. So I'm going to now go to the cost analysis, and uh, there could be some stuff in here that I may need to play with and, and look at. Now I'm going to leave this at method one. I'm not going to have some feasibility development studies. Some people might. And, uh, you know, we could define this, but I happen to know, I was very fortunate that I, I installed my system for $5,259, and then I offset that. And what they're saying is, electricity is going to cost me $13 a year to run that pump, and the natural gas uh, the offset that I would still have to use is going to be about 32 So the total fuel that I'm going to have to use to run my system with this new new gate case is going to be 45 bucks and that means if I look at the natural gas I, I, I really am going to have an annual savings of hundred and forty seven dollars so that's how their ret screen is proposing this so let's go over to the financial analysis now there's a few things that we're going to need to build upon but here's a, a couple conservative uh, rates uh, there was a time when the, the, the fuel cost escalation, and we can find that through a variety of means on the internet, but there's some finan financial uh, analysis that's been per performed over the years uh, from like energy information website and some others that this uh, cost has actually increased over, has decreased over time. It once was increasing quite substantially, but the last three years our economy has gone down and the fuel cost escalation rate has gone down. I think 3% is a sufficient value and the typical rate of inflation is 3%. I think those are valid numbers. I think they're probably typically conservative, but that's what I'm going to leave with you. Now, on my proposed site, I'm going to have it up for 40 years. I don't see any reason why it couldn't last that long. There's nothing that would cause it to fail. This is a pretty robust system. Some folks, I think, will make that value lower, but let's leave it at 40. I'm not really so worried about how long it's there. That's just a projection of time lapsed out. Now, incentives and grants. Um, the federal incentive is 30%, so that was all I was able to get for this system. So I took 30% of the $5,259 of total cost, and that came out to $1,578. So the total cost that I had was $5,259. I subtracted the grants and incentives right there. I added the total annual costs which was the proposed fuel cost. The annual cost of the total there was $45. If I had some in, uh, interest in some other cases, uh, I would need to go there. Operate, uh, you know, the OEM, the O and M, which is operations and maintenance and, and, and other costs. I haven't added that in yet. I, I'll come back to that in just a second. Let's leave that out for just a very rough estimate of what we've got. And so, in essence, I am saving a total annual savings of about 147 uh, total annual savings, about $147 a year. And so uh, what this means is that I'll have a payback of this system in about 24 years. So if I'm looking at a, a, a month, you know, a money maker, uh, you could make some arguments either way. And I'm not going to justify this uh, for anybody. I'm just saying this is what this is going to give us, is a payback in 24 years. And again, this is for me doing it. So there's there's some incentive for me to do it because, well, I, honestly, I teach it. And I want to be able to do this and say this. If I was an economics guy, you could make the case this may not be feasible. But if I change this value to the for what it had been for the last couple of years, which was a minimum of 5% rates of increase of fuel costs, that number is starting to come back down quite a bit now. And, and the payback is going to make me you know, some money if towards the end. I'm going to have $9,000. Is that going to be a real case scenario? I, I don't know. I really don't. And I'm not typically worried about that. I, I'm, I'm just presenting you with some very conservative figures and what this is going to cost me and why I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Frankly, I, I, I have a payback of 23, well, 24 years here. Uh, if I take the total value of the last year total profit of $4,211 and I divide it by 40 years, that means in essence every year I'm getting an addition $105 back. Do I see that in my pocket? The answer is no, not typically, but there is still some value to be added to that. So if I go down to the cost analysis, what I want to do is come back to cost analysis and I want to go over to 
uh, operation uh, and uh, cost and where is it the user defined periodic costs and so I can add some stuff into these values down here and so what I could do is user defined costs or credits and so I could do year 30 years unit cost of thirty dollars or I can change that value out to a 10 year period and the unit cost is that. Now when I come back to the financial, we're moving through the quick, but if I come back here, now you see that over a 10 year period that the monthly OEM operations and maintenance cost is 30 bucks. That drops my values down and brings that out a little bit, but you know, I, whew, there's, there's some values that could be uh, periodic credits and uh, so forth. So. I'm not the finance guy. I, I'm not really the big pusher of this. I'm just trying to help us out do a site assessment to look at the re rate of uh, the 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 internal rate of returns, which is the IRRs here. That I'm getting a rate of return of about three and a half percent if I look at it over the course of time. That that's not too bad. Um, interest rates on a rate of return of your of your. Uh, uh, just a regular savings account is not nowhere near this. How about interest that's coming back from a 401k? You could make an argument that the 401k could be paying you back more. I, I'm not uh, I'm just letting you know these are values to take a look at. So here's three things that to, to be on the essence for. Now what we're going to do is look at our final uh, project and make some determinations for what we have. So we're looking at somewhere's home and this is part two so we're gonna pick up exactly where we left off and we entered in the values from the product database into here now as I get going on to here for part two I'm looking down and the biggest value that I really want to keep an eye on first and foremost is the solar fraction and the solar fraction is the percentage of um, solar energy extracted from the Sun that's given uh, back to the system and uh, I'm just trying to think of the best way to describe this, but in essence, what we're saying is almost 100% of our energy is coming from the sun. This can't be right. So let's take a look at here. And I noticed very quickly that this was a zero right here. There was nothing in this case. So I'm going to bring this number back. And you won't have to worry about that because that value would have been given to us when we did their install. And I believe that the, the value that I had written down from the material of my and I had all the spec sheets was 0.75 uh, BTUs per hour per cubic foot for the, this coefficient of uh, uh, the, this coefficient of fr uh, friction it's not friction but this coefficient factor of uh, the, the system and now if I don't know what this value is there's a couple ways of doing it I can click on this help button and it may not pull this up but basically oh it did so good this is uh, should be the used uh, da, 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 database it's a performance of a solar collector so I'll be honest I don't really know exactly what that thing is but I do know that when I looked on my data sheet so as embarrassing as it is to say I found it, it was 0.75 I entered it in it brought my solar fraction down which as a technician and an install person this is a more manageable number we should have had two solar thermal installs to make a good case for our offloading of water and let's bring that back down to two let's just say we had two thermal panels up on the roof and we're at about fifty percent it's a little low for us but I mean that would extract about fifty percent of the energy I personally have these older modules uh, modules panels uh, solar thermal panels I put them up and that brings my value up to seventy eight percent now I'm gonna take miscellaneous losses at ten percent it should be about two percent per per solar thermal panel that's up mounted somewhere so I'm gonna leave that at 10 and then I'm gonna say okay I need 132 gallons minimal it's a storage capacity for us in central Illinois we're gonna to wanna to leave it as a one-to-one -one ratio one square foot per gallon of water for collection uh, heat exchanger is yes by definition we like to leave our heat exchange uh, uh, option as 85 percent that doesn't always mean that's the case but that's a good offset this miscellaneous loss is additional losses from uh, pump the, 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 and other sorts of insulation and so forth so there's some losses that are incurred here and if you're not sure about it then you can highlight that hit help and it'll tell you but just for ease of argument I like to be conservative I'm gonna leave that at four percent now 
data that we've gleaned from the internet and, and from uh, Ross at the MREA has has kind of given me the impression that I, I'd like to keep my pump power, the power it requires to run that electrical pump to pump the fluid from the storage tank to the collectors, is about 0.6 watts per foot squared. Now I got beat on a few times because I had the darn thing at watts per meter square so make sure it's per foot square. And then at my electrical rates I again went conservative as 0.26 so 12 and a half cents per kilowatt hour is the electrical rate. And that gives me an electrical summary of I'm saving about 11.8 uh, million BTUs. Now if I move that decimal place one to the right, that will give me therms. That's just a very rough uh, uh, equation to give me therms. So 118 therms of energy will be saved. So I will have a solar fraction, which is touch on the high side at 78%. But the reason it's high is I had these solar thermal panels. I put them on my roof or in my backyard in this particular case, but I put them out and I'm going to do a little bit of heating in a workshop. It just happened to be that way. It didn't have to be that way, but I had that energy available to us. Now, what did I have in the system? Well, what you haven't seen is the backstory. The solar site analysis requires us to go out and look at the homeowner, and this is homeowner guy. If you haven't figured out, this is my house. So at my house, I have a a open vented it's just a 80 gallon hot water tank that's where I'm going to store uh, my hot water system so the hot water system I'm going to have a storage tank which in the garage is a hundred and uh, two hundred gallons so it's the minimum of hundred and thirty five gallons uh, that is required so about the hundred thirty two hundred thirty five gallons one one for one but I'm gonna say now I made this very high the efficiencies really is not 80% for just a regular hot water storage tank it's about 65% that is pretty good so that means the storage the heat's being wasted uh, to keep that water warm throughout the air is 65% so let's let's look at that so that really gives me uh, 147 to 32 all right now look at this here's the difference let's take a look at how much energy that I'm going to be saving throughout the year. I currently am going to utilize 233 therms. By putting the solar thermal system up, I am going to only use 51.6 therms. And at the cost of 63 cents per therm, which is a rather uh, conservative number, but as of late, the last three years, our natural gas has come down, so I'm being conservative. What that means is I would have spent $147 to $32 today by putting this system up. But let's just take a quick sneak peek. If I take 223 therms and, mu and subtract the 51.6, that gives me 171 uh, therms of net savings. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute. If I had 118 therms of produced heat, but yet you're telling me that I'm saving 171 therms, wait a minute, there's still some waste. And that waste is going up in the 65%. So if I take 118 and divide it by the 0.65, guess what that gets me? That gets me right at the difference between these two values right here. So basically what I'm seeing is the energy inefficiency of the losses of this system. And so that's what's going on in our, in our structure right here. Basically, we've got two ways of calculating this. Basic, uh, I say basically a zillion times, but what it comes down to is I have 118 million, 118 therms, or 11.8 million BTUs of energy that I'm able to capture from the sun and directly offset the hot water in my home. And then, as I look at that, and I look at the difference between therms used and therms used with the solar thermal system, I will have an electrical, I'll have a money savings here of, of, of the difference here, so somewhere near $115. But that excludes, I haven't included, the fuel cost required to run the pump. So that electrical pump is going to require some energy savings. So that's going to get us into the next state of looking at the cost analysis of this thing. Okay, so this is going to be a very consolidated uh, RET screen overview. And uh, when you open up RET screen, 
we get to this first page and this first page is the start menu and what I did is I set up these values we're gonna do a solar thermal install so you put your project name who's doing the preparation and then we're gonna choose we're gonna choose a heating we're gonna choose the technology which is solar thermal and so let's turn it back to solar thermal so solar thermal which is solar water heating then we're gonna choose the analysis type there are two types a very simple method that if you look down here you see start energy model and tools we're gonna to want to choose model 2 and by choosing model 2 you're gonna see a lot more detail be pulled up onto the screen and then this is a key point we're gonna to wanna to show settings and when we show settings we're gonna to wanna to set it to English currency is dollar and units of measure is imperial some of us will have the defaulted settings of metric for us it's gonna be easier to deal with in the imperial units that is our foots uh, inches pounds etc and then what I did is I selected the data choice uh, site location reference and the data that's associated with that and so then you can set your climate data location and you can see how I set up the United States Central Illinois region and then I converted these all to Fahrenheit so this is all straightforward okay there's nothing difficult there are other videos out online that show us how to do that but I'm going to assume that we know how to select our city our state and the location of uh, where this site is going to be located so that's going to show us the data and the data is by month what the annual air temperature and all the relative humidity is across that time so once we get that done we're now going to go to the energy model and the energy model is going to be this screen we're going to want to select the hot water not swimming pool this is going to be a home and I'm going to choose house then I'm going to choose the number of occupants there are four people in there technically there is a fifth person that's living here but the child is less than two years old so we're not going to consider them just yet in this particular homeowners example and we're going to say that they're living in this house a hundred percent of the time so that means it's not a rental unit where it's maybe just in the summer months or just the winter cabin getaway type of thing and then we're going to select typically about 20 gallons of hot water per person per day and so the estimated hot water usage according to RET screen is about 63 and we're gonna up that just a little bit we're gonna make it 80 just to be on the safe side now we can make some of these values change as to what we need it to be but we're gonna leave it at 80 and then what we're gonna say is um, well what can we do to keep the hot water hot and I think the, a good example is maybe about 115 degrees so let's keep it at 115 degrees and then the operating days per week is seven days so the base case is without a solar thermal system and the proposed case in this column right here is with a solar thermal system <clears throat> so we're gonna select those we're gonna leave it set to formula and the incremental initial cost this value right here gang is going to be roughly hundred and fifty dollars per square foot of collector typically for the state of Illinois where we're at that value is going to be about one to one that means if I have an 80 gallon collector or 80 gallons of hot water storage I should have 80 square foot of collector to heat that water up so basically 80 and so if I were to take 80 uh, square foot which is the same as the 80 gallons times $150 which is the typical install cost I am looking at a real incremental cost of $12,000 here the reason I put 5259 was this was the cost it cost me to make this install because I didn't have labor and I had some of the pieces and I was able to acquire it so this value is relatively low a typical homeowner that we're doing an install for would be about 12000 we're gonna fix this to the south so that means this solar location is going to be pointed due south at a fixed axis or fixed slope I should say of 60 degrees the reason I chose 60 was the fact that I wanted to do latitude plus 15 degrees and if you do latitude plus 15 degrees my location here is 40 degrees plus 15 means I have a latitude of 55 degrees I wanted to go slightly higher and the reason for it is I'm gonna oversize my system just a touch 
and uh, use a little bit of that heat to offload in my home. Certainly not going to be a tangible difference in the grand scheme of life between 55 degrees and 60. But I wanted to capture as much of that winter heat as I possibly could. So I set the slope to 60 degrees. And when it was all said and done, I hit 59 degrees instead of 60. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Now, the azimuth here is going to be 0 degrees. Due south will be considered 0 degrees in our solar thermal system. So if I wanted it to be a little bit off by 10 degrees to the west, that would be a plus 10 degrees. If I want to go to the 10 degrees east, it would be a minus 10 degrees. So now that we have that, now we're going to look at what type of collector that I'm going to use. And so what we're going to do is we're going to type glazed or unglazed. And this type we're going to type glazed and then we're going to go and choose. Now this is an old, old system here. What I would correctly do is I would click on this C database list and so for example I would have a Stiebel Eltron. So I would go to manufacturer, Stiebel Eltron, and I would put that, that data in there. Where is he at? I was just Stiebel Eltron and that Sol 25. And then I would insert that and I'd hit OK and that data would be entered into here. The data that I'm using is from a very old system, still quite relevant, totally fine and functioning, and I found the values that were here. But if I did the population base from the product database, it would pump those data in, into here. So this would be automatically set. Now according to RetScreen, it's going to say, hey, you want to see two of these modules to offload. I personally built my system with five, and that meant I had a total collector space of 135 square foot. And that meant I needed a, a tank of about 132. I actually have a tank of 200 gallons. So what that means is I have a total of five collectors, and I now need to put some loss in there. Now this miscellaneous loss is going to be for the energy as it losses as it's running. This doesn't really include shading and some other things. So I'm going to just up this guy to say about, oh, I'm going to say about, you usually do 2%. Per, per module. And so that's what we have there. And then what we have uh, around here after that is some other data. And we're going to get to that data in just a second.